Uh, we're going to do a quick chat. Uh, and th this, is, this is the issue that's uh, really the most important to me, uh, environmental issues. And, and in the last five years, I've changed my entire life to be the change that I want to see in the world. I only wish I had done it when I was your age. You guys are so inspiring. Um, let's just talk, though, real quick about uh, the issue of, of uh, we talked about energy poverty, somebody mentioned. Talk about racism and environmentalism. I mean, tribal issues. I really don't think... We, we think that much about that. There's a bunch of environmental organizations doing good work in that space. But, but, but first of all, what was the catalyst for you? I mean, where, where, when did you, was it just living where you live and seeing what you see and having the history that you have? How did you get so involved? Check. Okay, cool. Uh, so what my catalyst was is that I see climate change firsthand every single day back in Chishmaf and the love and the will of fire that you have in your belly to help and protect your own home, uh, seeing that it's not going to be there for, for my next generation, for the rest of the generations after me, you know, it just really puts a fire on your belly to protect and to help out your community because every single person in Shishmaf, all 600 people that lived on the island, they raised me. It, there's a saying that says it takes a village to raise a child, and that was true with me because I consider each and every single one person on Shishmaf uh, my family member and a friend and a loved one because they were there for me. They were there to help me and to make me who I am today. Uh, that's awesome. You said. What about you, Shutaska? Same question. You grew up in Denver? Boulder. Boulder? Yeah, so where, yeah. How did you come to all this? Yeah, well, I mean, I just want to point out about, about you know, for, for your story. And for me, I think part of where I see climate change is in our forests in Colorado. And, like, I spent my whole life in these forests, very connected. And my father is indigenous Mexica from Mexico City. And, um, you know, he, he raised me to, to understand and have a perspective that is, is respecting all life. Um, that is understanding that we are connected to, to, to the world around us and then to actually see that climate change was uh, destroying our forests because we were having more intense wildfires, we were having intense droughts. Um, all across the Front Range, we are seeing more and more impacts from climate change. And, you know, this is about more than just an environmental problem. These are stories. These are people. These are faces that are affected day in and day out. And, and, and at the end of the day, you know, these issues are about love because we fight mm. to protect that which we love. And when we have a sense of love for our communities, for our home, for our families, we will fight to protect that. And we, when our eyes are open and we can see that these issues like climate change and environmental injustice, those are affecting our family and community, we will fight to stop it. We will fight to create the solutions. Um, so, I mean, I think just when it comes down to it, it's just like a love for the world. Uh, by the way, I, I keep forgetting to mention this is working, the Snapchat filter. Please use it. Hey. Uh, what... For both of you, same question. Um, Issa, you first. What, what do you see as, I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of obstacles, um, uh, and they're different based on different communities. But what are, be specific, what are the obstacles in your way of achieving what you want? You know, for me, being Inupiaq Eskimo and Alaska Native, uh, that's one big issue uh, for me to overcome that uh, obstacle because not a lot of people realize that uh, there's a lot of racial uh, injustice in Alaska. Uh, being Alaska Native, you know, you get called a drunk, a pothead, you get called a rapist, and you know these, uh, and you call and you get called uh, mental. You know, you have they called you. They think that you have a mental disability, and you know just. Hearing this all of my life, and especially now, because I'm a lot older, I'm on the tail end of the youth right now, um, I'm starting to see that there's this uh, racial injustice in Alaska that uh, a lot of people don't realize. So that's one thing I got to overcome, and I know I will, because it all starts with us. It all starts with you. You are the change makers. and. It's, it's not hard for me to trust someone and to make new friends. It, I really do think of you guys as family, even if we didn't meet and didn't talk to. I just feel it that it just didn't, it really doesn't make a lot to make me consider you as a family member. So You say uh, you think you will overcome it. With all due respect, it looks like you have overcome it and you continue to overcome it. It's really inspiring, man, really inspiring. <laughs> 
Same question, man. Same question, Chuteska. What, 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 what do you see as the obstacles in your community? I mean, you talked about racial injustice. I mean, we can talk about that for days and hours. We have to, but yeah. same um, thing, different things. Yeah, I mean, f for me, it, it was a lot just because I was kind of like thrown into this at such a young age. Um, a, a struggle for, for me has definitely been able to, to accurately and appropriately present myself to the world in a way that's real. Um, and find a way to connect to young people because the I don't way mean to interrupt, but you have a struggle to pr present yourself in a way that's real. Did, did well, you, I'm getting better at have it. Have you seen yourself <laughs> perform? <laughs> Amazing. But, thank you. Thank so you. authentic. But like, but I think there's still a certain disconnect when it comes to talking to young people. Right. Where I feel like in, in the world that we live in and, and in our school systems and in the way that we're taught, a lot of youth are apathetic and hopeless yes. and disconnected from a lot of issues. Whether it's you know racial injustice or climate injustice, a lot of people don't have room in their head to think about that. Um, and I think that finding the ways to, to interact and, and to engage and to talk about this in a way that isn't just facts and information, but it's stories and music, you know, like that's such an important part of flipping the script. So it's like reaching our generation and a lot of us are, you know, want to tune out and don't want to listen to the important things. But like we have to, we have to because like our future depends on it. Um, also, it's like sometimes we don't get taken seriously as young people. And I definitely see among my peers that are also trying to get engaged in organizing and activism that it's hard sometimes at first to find a community. It's really easy to feel isolated and to feel alone, like you're the only person in this. And I've been there before and I felt like depressed and, and, and wanting to quit because I feel alone. And then I come to places like this and you know, I met young people like Issa and like, you know, I see all you guys listening to the lyrics and like getting hype about it. And like, this is a celebration. We should be excited about this time in our lives to be alive and be able to influence change. And like. So I think being a part of a community and being a part of a family is the most beautiful thing that inspires people to be a part of something. <laughs> Movement. What? I don't think I really heard the word activist until I was like 20 or something. Um, that was like two years ago, three years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, I'm 22. <laughs> what? does it mean to be an activist? You're both activists, there's no doubt about it. You're living activist life, you're here. Uh, I think there's a lot of activists uh, in the room, obviously, but what does it mean to be an activist? When do you get to call yourself an activist? You know, uh, like I said, I don't really consider myself an activist. I just consider myself an earth protector, a water protector, a salmon lover, someone who really cares about the environment and really wants to uh, tell my story and to amplify other youth across not only Alaska but also the United States because being an activist means that you are uh, connected to a community and each and every single one of us are and uh, we're here all together and we're a community right now we're here and we're telling our story we're uh, talking amongst one another and you know, just being part of your community and also raising and addressing the problem that you see in your community is something very powerful coming from youth like you guys, that your voice is very important. Thank you, man. Um, I just want to say, too, I don't really, like, I use a term, but I don't really like, consider myself an activist simply because I feel like it's become a, like, a really exclusive term, whereas, like, I think it disconnects people when you say, oh, I'm an activist, or, like, let's go be activists or get engaged in activism. Like I feel like most <laughs> young people in high school or, or even like college and in, in, in middle school like don't, don't, are kind of turned off by that, that word, you know, are, are like, oh, you know, I think, I think it creates a barrier between myself and you to call myself an activist because then it's like, oh, I'm here and you guys also have to be here to care. I feel like rather than having everybody become better activists or, or become an activist, I think it's just like, doing what you love and living your life and doing your thing and understanding that every action you take impacts the world around you. It's, it's, you know, if you have a passion for our water, for our land, for protecting the salmon, like just, just, it's not about being an activist necessarily, but it's about fighting for what we believe in and what we love. So, so all of us can be leaders without having to carry the label around activists. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think to really break down barriers and, and build bridges amongst people to realize, you know, like I'm a 17 year old kid trying to figure out, you know, finishing high school and also traveling, but like going through, I think a lot of things that, that many other 17 year old youth go through. Like, so it's more than just an activism. It's more than just like this serious kid I am on stage. It's like, you know, we're all people and we experience this, this, this want when we have, when we find something that we love that is in danger, we experience this you know, kind of sensation and this feeling of being inspired to do something about it. 
you know, further than just the term activism. It's like so without the label, just basically both of you and all of us trying to be the change that we want to see. Just be Embodying it. Just do it. it. Yeah. Don't call it something. Just do it. Yeah. What, what about just in, in, in urban areas? We don't think of environmentalism and environmentalists living in urban areas. There's a lot of, uh, obviously, uh, young people here that live in New Orleans and Philadelphia and Chicago uh, and, and other places all over the country. Um, what does environmentalism look like in urban areas and cities in the United States of America? What, what can you do? What should we be thinking about? Um, I think that the traveling a lot has given me a greater sense of context because I, I didn't really grow up in a big city. Um, but I think going to, you know, Rio de Janeiro and in Brazil and like in New York and spending time in LA a bunch, that those are actually some of the most like active communities that I've seen because uh, like even in just my town of Boulder with like 100,000 people, it's not like a huge city, but it's not super small. But like even then there's a, to a certain extent, it's like you feel like you're in a bubble and you're a little bit isolated. Whereas in cities, I feel like we have access to a lot of, um, sometimes we have access to, to communities that are already engaged in different forms of activism or, or, or taking action on in, environmental problems in our cities. Um, you know, everything from urban gardening um, you know, to, to public transportation are like things that we can do in our community to lessen the impact because whether it's trash in our streets or we see that we're having heavy rain like all year long or it didn't snow this year or it snowed really, really hard or we're just having like these different impacts that we're seeing are going to affect both cities and rural communities. Um, so I don't know. For, I think as, as young people that live in urban environments, you guys can tell that story better than even I can, you know, and so to make sure that you are telling that story and asking and reaching out for the resources that you don't have and making sure that you're as educated as possible about what is going on in your community and how you can do something about it. I have four minutes. That's time for two questions. Um, can, can we get two questions uh, right here? And we'll go right here after. Uh, so my name is Veronica. I'm from in this valley. And you said something about informing people about your story and basically telling people who you are. One thing about Aspen, Colorado, if you don't know, is that in a decade, they estimate that we won't be able to even uh, ski or snowboard on our own mountains because the snow will be gone. Sorry. It's something that I love to do, and it really, um, it's sad to me that people don't take the time to realize how big their impact really can be. So in cities where you don't experience the snow or maybe the rainfall, it's not normal to have that kind of stuff, so you don't really think about it. Well, in cities and towns like this, where we're small, we're in the mountains, and we experience that every day, and we're losing something huge about our tourists and things like that. Great so point. So to inform people, that's kind of something about Aspen that's upsetting. And not only Aspen, the Rocky Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, the Catskill Mountains, the Andes. Uh, you want me to name more mountain ranges? Um, over here? Yeah, just to say real quick, like that's, oh, that's a great example of, of you know, stepping up and telling your story and seeing how climate change is something that connects all of us, whether we've seen it or not yet. And so just like to keep that in mind, to listen to those stories and, and find your own, your own voice in telling your own story. My name's Jack, and I'm originally from around here. And I have a question, sp voted uh, specifically for X. You said, like, you're not an activist, but shouldn't we be promoting activism? If we're gonna set the bar for change, let's set it high. Let's get loud about what we want. Let's get angry, let's hit the streets. Let's make signs, like yeah, we should be the change, but I want everyone to know I'm the change. Yeah. Yeah. No, truly, and, and when I say it, I don't necessarily like identify very strongly with the term activist, it doesn't mean I'm saying don't be radical, don't be crazy, don't be loud, don't take to the streets, don't me um, like massively mobilize your people. Stand up. Um, I, I, just, I think it was more just like a, the term activism. I totally believe that we have to do that. That, it, that change comes from a lot of different angles, and one of them is massive demonstrations in the streets. And that doesn't mean just showing up for the issues you care about, but standing in solidarity with other communities. Go to Black Lives Matter events, LGBTQ um, you know, marches, for just stand for you know, equality in that area, stand for climate justice, um, you know, go and march for, to, to protect different pipe or to protect different land from pipelines that are crossing the land. So it's like, yes, mobilize, get loud, get in the streets, and that's a great place to start. And then from there, we have to continue to diversify the ways we are taking action. But I totally agree with you, man. We got to get loud. We have to let the world know that this generation is not going to remain complacent, that we are not going to stand on the sideline while the adults ruin the planet that we're going to be inheriting. Sorry. sorry. One more round of applause for you guys. That was, uh, <laughs> don't apologize to me, man. That was awesome. That was really great.
Thank you guys very, very much. Uh, go buy some Earth Guardian merch back there, right? And support these guys every way you can. Um, like I said earlier, and I've said a few more times, uh, you guys are the most inspiring people I've met at the Aspen Ideas Conference since I've been coming here five years because you are you, doing something that a lot of us as adults have come to maybe later. You're doing it right now, and it's so obvious that you're going to be living this the rest of your life. Thank you for being change makers. Thank you for, ha for allowing me uh, to be a part of this. I really appreciate it.